It is now time for member statements. I recognize the mem oh, I recognize the deputy house leader. Uh, my, uh, pardon me, Speaker. On a point of order, I just wish to raise that pursuant to Standing Order 7E, I wish to inform the House that tonight's evening meeting is cancelled. Thank you. I recognize the member from Windsor Thompson. We've lost a beloved member of our community and a health care hero, Hannah Paré. Hannah was just 22 years old and was a neurology nurse at Windsor Regional Hospital who tragically passed away due to complications during surgery. Hannah was an amazing nurse for our community who truly loved what she did and was dedicated to helping others. Even after her passing, Hannah continues to help others by donating her organs, saving multiple lives. Her devastating loss will be felt across our entire community. To honour her legacy, Hannah's family has started a GoFundMe page to fundraise for a scholarship in her name at the University of Windsor. Hannah was very passionate about school, and her legacy will support others in their academic journey. I want to take this opportunity to recognize Hannah's service as a nurse and extend my deepest condolences to her family. I'm grateful for the impact that Hannah has made in the lives of so many. Member statement. I recognize the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Today, my colleague MPP West and I wish we were in our riding so we could join the 900 healthcare professionals holding a rally at Health Sciences North. You see, Speaker, these workers have been working without a collective agreement since June of 2022, two long years ago. Today, May 16, is the long awaited arbitration date. We support workers, Speaker. I know that there are shortages in 15 different classifications of healthcare professionals, from respiratory therapists, pathologist assistant, lab technician, radiation therapist, medical radiation technologist, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, speech language pathologist, pharmacy technician, prosthetic and orthotics technician, perfusionist, and the list goes on. These shortages, Speaker, cause delayed in tests needed for diagnosis, delays in care and treatment plan, and miscare altogether. All these delays lead to extended hospital stay, hospital overcrowding, and hallway health care. The top reason why healthcare professionals leave their work speaker is pay and working conditions. So I sure hope that the arbitration brings them what negotiations was not able to bring, fair wages, and good working condition. To all of the healthcare workers out there and allies at the rally today, we, I value your important work. We wish we could be there with you. I sure hope that after waiting for two years, you get a good collective agreement. So I'll thank you. I recognize the member from Brampton West. Our government under Premier Ford's leadership is getting it done by building Highway 413. In the coming year, by 2025, we'll move ahead with construction and get shovels in the ground as a part of our plan to build Ontario. Speaker, with Halton, Peel and York Region set to grow at incredible speed, our government is saying yes to building the critical infrastructure our province needs by building the roads and highways that will keep these communities strong and thriving. Speaker, Highway 413 will bring relief to the most congested corridor in North America. Preliminary design and environmental assessment work and consultations are underway for the new route. Speaker, during construction, Highway 413 is expected to generate up to $350 million in real uh, GDP and support 3,500 good-paying union jobs such as heavy equipment operators, drilling uh, coring contractors, concrete steel workers, utility contractors, environmental specialists, laboratory technologists, safety inspectors, and so many more in the industry, Speaker. Once completed, not only will it improve our productivity, encourage economic growth by getting goods to market fast, 
faster, but it will also have a measurable impact on the quality of life for Ontario drivers so they can spend more time with their families and less time stuck at grid in gridlock. Speaker, we're delivering on our province to build Highway 413 with our plan to fix gridlock, make life easier and more convenient for millions of drivers in the GTA across Ontario. Speaker, we're getting it done. We're building Highway 413. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, MRI wait times. We are facing unacceptable wait times for MRIs in Niagara right now. Right now, our community faces a staggering 306-day wait time for MRIs, a wait time that nearly doubled in the past year. Since 2016, we fought tooth and nail to secure, secure additional funding to increase MRI operating hours. In 2021, we received funding to operate a brand new MRI machine, and yet, despite these efforts, our wait times have only worsened. Why are we in a dire situation and waiting 306 days? People in Niagara sh should not be forced to endure unbearable waits for medical procedures. Yet here we are, waiting endlessly while our health care deteriorates. This crisis will become another excuse for the government to push for privatization of our health care services. But let me be clear, privatization is not the answer. It only benefits the wealthy few who will leave the rest of us suffering. We must hold the government accountable for its failure to prioritize the health and well-being of our communities. It's time to demand action, to demand change. We cannot allow our public health care system to continue failing us. This government has committed to funding to ensure Niagara residents have the access to MRIs. So what is happening in Niagara Health? We can't allow our health care to fail on purpose. We cannot allow our health care to fail on purpose. 306 days, frankly, is unacceptable to the residents of Niagara. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. I was pleased to join Minister of Health last month for a very important virtual announcement which will positively affect many families in Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. A new regional pediatric surgical program was launched to address the wait list for surgeries for children and youth in eastern Ontario. Part of this government's investment of an additional $330 million each year in pediatric health services in our hospitals and community-based health care facilities. Led by the Kids Come First Health Team, this initiative brings the Chio Day Surgery Program to two sites, the Carlton Place and District Memorial Hospital in my riding of Lanark Frontenac Kingston and the Brockville General Hospital in my neighbour MPP's riding for Leeds, Granville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Funding will go toward equipment and training at the Carlton Place and District Memorial Hospital, including pediatric advanced life support skills, as well as general and orthopedic surgery. My thanks to the hardworking and dedication of Mary Wilson Trider, who just recently retired from her position of CEO of the Mississippi River Health Alliance, which includes the Carlton Place and District Memorial Hospital, as well as Nick Nicholas Latrolius from Brockville General and Alex Munter, CEO of CHEO. Through the, your health, a plan for connected and convenient care, the government is providing significant financial support to hospitals and communities to improve how they deliver pediatric care, ensuring families in Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston and across the province can access care easier, faster and closer to home. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In 2018, I was riding my bicycle along Bloor Street, and a vehicle stopped, or pulled past me, stopped, and a passenger got out of the back door, and there just was not time for me to react. I ran into the door. I was, the bicycle was damaged. I was injured. I ended up with a, a horseshoe-shaped bruise on my thigh, and that was one of 132 dooring incidents in the city that year. Uh, I actually got off quite lucky. I've since spoken with another gentleman who was also doored, uh, and he was pushed under a truck when he got doored, and he's a quadriplegic. Sometimes dooring incidents even lead to death. Uh, so I've been thinking about this, and I'm thinking there's a technical solution to reduce and potentially eliminate doorings. And today in the legislature, we've got engineering students from the University of Toronto who have developed a device that goes on side view mirrors 
And when, if a bicycle or another vulnerable uh, pedestrian or, or a vehicle is coming up the side of a vehicle, it will send out an alarm, it will send out a light, and it will prevent the person from opening the door so that we can reduce the number of doorings. Today, I will be introducing a motion in the legislature to mandate these devices on all rideshare vehicles in the province of Ontario to be paid for by the rideshare companies uh, three years out. I'm hoping that the government will pass this motion and help us to reduce and potentially eliminate doorings in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to rise to talk about OSAD, Ontario Students Against Impaired Driving. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to address some of OSAD's amazing student delegates at the 2024 launch of SAD Day. OSAD was established in 1987 and is the only student-led anti-impaired driving initiative in Ontario. Impaired driving used to just refer to drinking and driving. Now it includes anything that impairs one's ability to operate a vehicle safely. Impairment can be caused by alcohol, drugs, both legal and illegal, fatigue, texting while driving, and even things like loud music or loud friends. Last year, OSAD won the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario's Initiative of the Year. These young people are to be commended for their outstanding leadership and service in their schools and their communities. We know effective educational and awareness programs like OSAD have the power to shift <laughs> attitudes, change behavior, and lead to safer driving practices. Thank you to OSAD, to the team of dedicated students, volunteers, and directors for continuing to remind us that the decisions made behind the wheel affect not just your own life, but the lives of countless others. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Guelph. Speaker, it's an honour to rise today to say thank you to Guelph Climate Action Network and the Guelph Wellington Coalition for Social Justice for organizing a community climate forum on May 4th. I was so impressed that over 160 community members came out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon to problem solve and discuss real actions we can take to address the climate emergency. I left the meeting inspired and energized by the people power in that room. People talked about how vital local food, public transit, cycling and walking infrastructure, more homes in existing neighborhoods and waste reduction are to reducing climate pollution. They talked about the need to disconnect their homes from dirty fossil gas and install heat pumps as a way to save money heating and cooling their homes. They made it clear to me that they want Ontario to invest in low-cost wind and solar, not expensive, dirty gas plants. And they don't want any more four-lane highways in the Greenbelt. Speaker, most of all, they told me they want a livable, low-carbon future for their children and grandchildren. They want a government that's going to invest in preparing our communities for the climate emergency that we're experiencing, the floods, the droughts, the fires. So I want my constituents to know that I hear you, and I will work hard at Queen's Park to bring forward the solutions you want and that we all need. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Richmond Hill. I'm honoured to share a touching moment from this past Mother's Day. With four children and seven grandchildren of my own, I deeply understand the joys and challenges of being a mother. As we celebrated Mother's Day the past Sunday, I rise today on behalf of the people of Richmond Hill to pay tribute to the remarkable women who enriched their lives in the countless way, our mothers. I recently attended a heartwarming celebration organized by the Catholic Community Services of York Region. It was a potent event that celebrated incredible mothers in our community, emphasizing their resilience and boundless love. 
sitting among fellow mothers and their families, I was moved by their stories and sacrifice and unwavering support. It was a reminder of profound impact mothers have on our families and communities. Let us reaffirm our commitment to advocate for the well-being of mothers in Ontario. You are appreciated, cherished, and celebrated, not just only on Mother's Day, but every day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Essex. Thank you, Speaker. It's Building Safety Month. Ontario's building officials play a critical role in tackling the province's housing supply shortage while keeping us safe in accordance with the Building Code. Since 1976, the Ontario Building Code has set the minimum standard for new and existing buildings in the province of Ontario. The Code impacts our daily lives, from establishing safety standards in our homes, to ensuring public spaces are accessible for all, and to establishing innovative approaches as we work to meet our ambitious goal of building 1.5 million homes by 2031. We cannot unlock Ontario's housing potential without keeping up with the latest innovations and safety standards, and that's why I am proud of our government's release of the 2024 Ontario Building Code, the largest building code update since 2012. The new addition provides opportunities to accelerate the construction of new housing projects, such as the expansion and the use of encapsulated mass timber construction, while ensuring the buildings in Ontario continue to be among the safest and the most accessible in North America. I'm proud to be part of a government that continues to work with municipalities and builders to deliver on our mandate to ensure that all Ontarians have access to safe and secure housing. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.